So today I thought I would provide a little window into um, an annual event that happens at the Abbey that's um, an actually excellent opportunity to practice. And it will be more of a window into my own mind, but um, this is something that anyone who comes to the Abbey and is here, uh, they know that moving day is something that is very special. And uh, that happened this past weekend. And for the second year in a row, I've been surprised at what has come up in my mind. Um, yeah, I've woken up on both days thinking, this is going to go smoothly, everything will be fine. And, and then something happens and afflictions come up and I'm, yeah, some, for some reason I'm surprised. And this year I was able to put together my surprise with arrogance because the night before Venerable Children gave us a excellent teaching on arrogance and it was really good timing except that I forgot to apply it to myself and so the next day um, yeah it was kind of forgotten so uh, just to review what is arrogance uh, in case we've forgotten uh, according to Samsara Nirvana and Buddha Nature which is a, a book by His Holiness and Venerable Children arrogance is a mental factor that based on the view of a personal identity that misapprehends how the I or mind exists, strongly grasps an inflated view of ourselves. It functions to prevent us from learning and increasing our virtue and causes us to disrespect and denigrate others. And then in the book, uh, Venerable uh, and His Holiness went on to talk about how Vasu Bandhu, one of the great Buddhist masters, described seven different kinds of arrogance. And I think some of them are, were quite relevant to my moving day experience. Um, four of those seven types have to do with thinking that we're better than others, whether those other people are lesser or equals or um, more superior or super more superior. And that's probably happening in my mind all day long. Um, but I couldn't think of anything specific on moving day. But the thing that really st stuck out for me is um, the arrogance that regards our aggregates and thinks I, which is also called the conceit of I am. And this is based on self-grasping ignorance, where we believe ourselves to be inherently existent and therefore are naturally the most important thing in the whole world. So I uh, woke up on moving day with a very self-centered frame of mind, and I didn't even realize it. I think, you know, that's kind of <laughs> how I've lived most of my life. It's all about how to get what I want, what's best for me, and yeah, no hint of non-virtue anywhere in my mind. Um, but it really happened to color the day. So the objective of the day was to get from point A to point B in as quick and a painless a way as possible. And then when I arrived in my new room, point B, the idea was to make it as comfortable and aesthetically beautiful as possible. And here we see that um, the eight worldly concerns of <laughs> attachment to comfort and pleasure and aversion to uh, discomfort and mm, unsightly sights and smells and sounds uh, were really at play there. Uh, and then came the greed and aversion. Uh, so thinking, I don't like this stressor. Uh, I wish I had more shelf space, my old room had more um, shelf space, this room was too hot, there's not enough light, etc, etc. These kinds of things started to ar arise. And um, so then the next type of arrogance that came up was uh, thinking that we have good qualities that we don't actually have. So I woke up in the morning thinking I was full of equanimity and detachment and humility and compassion. And instead, what came up was bias and attachment and then anger. Uh, my expectations were not met. <laughs> we started moving earlier than expected, and I finished later than I expected. And then there were other people around me who ran into difficulties, and that sort of affected me. And then um, some were commenting on what was going on, uh, what I was doing, what others were doing. And so that all happened to make me, um, it happened to make the mental seed of anger arise in my mind. And then um, I started to blame others. I started to, <laughs> um, yeah, 
get a little bit self-righteous thinking, why are people behaving like this? If only they would behave and mind their own business, everything would be going smoothly. We'd all be in perfect harmony and then we could reach enlightenment very quickly. Um, and then the last kind of arrogance that uh, came up was thinking faults are virtues. So examples of this are thinking that I'm an expert at arranging furniture and taking great pride in that. And also I know how to secure the best furnishings and the best tablecloths so that uh, my room is the most beautiful. And uh, yeah, that had no higher aim than basically uh, my own enjoyment. Uh, there was nothing about others or caring for others, bodhicitta, emptiness. Yeah, and then uh, about halfway through the day, Venerable Pende gave a very helpful BBC on the comparing mind, and that sort of uh, brought me back <laughs> into alignment with reality a little bit. Um, and it really reminded me that my own mind is a source of happiness or suffering. And so I was able to go about the rest of the day with a little bit more of a Dharma mindset. So in the future, I really would like to avoid um, being shocked or having afflictions arise. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'd like to approach the moving day a little bit different. And so the first thing I'm going to recognize that I, I'm probably going to get triggered um, and not assume that this is no sweat and, you know, people get upset or crazy. So, yeah, and to see the whole day as an opportunity for practice, because that's actually what it is. That's the whole purpose of switching rooms, which Venerable Children reminded us, is to help us let go of our attachment. So keep that front and center and recall that throughout the day. And then make sure to view others and myself with compassion. It's a stressful day for people and to not uh, judge or saying, you know, this should be easy. It's just about moving furniture. No, there's a lot of stuff that comes up. So I need to be um, more sensitive and more respectful towards that. And then build in time to help others. I saw one nun in particular, but I know in the past others have sort of made an effort to help other people move. So they built that into their plan for the morning. And I just thought that was a really wonderful way to um, make the day not so, so much about me and my needs, but you know, use it to connect to others and support them if they need it. Yeah, and then um, the last thing is uh, remembering that at the time of death, I don't want to be worrying about furniture and tablecloths, so um, really not to <laughs> indulge that impulse um, to seek those things out as if it's really life and death. So maybe um, other people have similar insights from that day, but uh, I think it's really um, a special opportunity to practice, and may we all use whatever we've learned uh, to continue to benefit all beings and make it closer to Buddhahood.